When I was singing in the church choir, I was told off. off. I was kicked out of the church choir because I wasn't singing like a little boy was supposed to sing. Was supposed to sing. 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 It's difficult to it's difficult to answer because I, I sometimes I'm a singer, sometimes I'm a, an actor, sometimes I'm a performance artist, sometimes I'm something else. So it's very difficult to define what I do. Um, I would say I am um, an experimental entertainer, if such a thing exists. When my parents would leave the house, when I was alone at home, I would put on a record and sing along to the singer. Mostly Julie Andrews, that was the, 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 the one who uh, inspired me most in those days. And I would just trill along with the record. And obviously the neighbours who heard that, they thought it was my mother singing. So they, they at some point, the uh, lady who lived next to us, uh, she uh, just stopped my mother in, in outside her door and complimented her with an amazing singing voice and my mother went like but I don't sing and uh, and they realized it was me and so I had to come out as a as a soprano <laughs> and uh, and that's how yeah and that's that was my kind of uh, non-professional debut with next door neighbor yeah amazing <laughs> I'm not an opera singer, I don't have uh, the voice of, of an opera singer. I do use sort of sometimes um, operatic style uh, voice, uh, which is more a really a sort of uh, um, musical theatre operatic voice, so it's, it's lighter in quality and stuff. In traditional opera, a man sings like a man, a woman sings like a woman, it's not a place for someone like me. The women wear this exaggerated version of femininity of which hysteria seems to be the norm and the men prance about with a virility that borders on the bestial. Look at me. In opera, a man sings like So this. I like to entertain the audience. I'm not like an alienating um, artist who is uh, um, difficult and... and uh, but... Um, but certainly I, I try and do things that are not the norm, that are not mainstream, that are not um, um, wholesome and, and pure, <laughs> as a, something more mainstream would be, probably. Things like this. <laughs> It was an inner urge. I just had to do it. I didn't really, I don't think, at least uh, consciously, there was any influence. I didn't want to be like anyone in particular. I didn't want to uh, do what others were doing. I just knew that I had to do it. Some say that, um, uh, and I, I agree, that um, uh, perform the, the bug of the performance of wanting to be a performer or an artist is sort of genetic. You have it embedded in your DNA. In my case, it's probably true because my great-great-grandfather was the last star of the Commedia dell'arte. So I wasn't influenced by him because I never <laughs> met him, obviously, and never, never saw what he did because he, he died long before uh, cinema or film existed. But if it's true that it's genetic, then I, I sort of inherited this, this urge. Stairs. 
I mean, a lot of uh, um, conceptual art, which thank God I think it's on its way out after after decades of giving us hideous things. Um, you know, you can you can hide yourself behind the fact that you have a concept, you have an idea, but you can't really do anything. So you, oh, I'm standing by this tree and I'm doing absolutely nothing, and that means everything. Well, you know, if you if you are an amazing dancer who has decided to do that, then I will consider you an artist and I will like you. But if you can't do anything and you just stand by a tree, then I don't like that. <laughs> I don't think that's art. <laughs> I started off in cabaret only because it was the only accessible thing uh, there was for me. I mean, you cannot go to the National Theatre and say, no, no, hey, would you take me? But you can do that in a cabaret theatre. Would you take me? And they will take you if you can do something. So um, to begin with, that was why I, the reason why I, I made my debut in cabaret and I chose it. Anything I do, I always inject the spirit of cabaret in a way or, an, or another, in a, in a form or, or another. Even in my own theatre, the place that I've written, they are very cabaretic. They, they, in them I always break the fourth wall and I talk to the audience or call them in or uh, grab them and make them do something. Or, or, or I, My plays are really variety shows for one performer. Especially when the club is your own. <laughs> What do I want to achieve with my art? Pay the bills. Ah. <laughs> okay. Well, the easy answer is to make make audiences forget about the taxman or, or you know the <laughs> the problems on the, in their lives. I mean, that's I guess what every performer wants to do. But because I do things what, that are probably uh, challenging sometimes, I want them to question. Uh, stuff that they always taken for granted that it's like that and I want them to go home and think oh maybe that's you know w w what I've been thinking so far it's not exactly what it should be or maybe um, you know I, I should look at th things differently I've, I've done that with a couple of plays of mine where um, throughout the show I make the audience relax and have a great time and have fun to then hit them in the face with the home truth and suddenly they discover that they've been laughing at something that it's no laughing matter. And, and you can see there's a moment in the show where, where you can see them just going, <gasps> and oh my God, and, and yeah. And then from then on, the, the show becomes really dramatic and it's just a, sort of an accusation to all of us, to humanity for, for, for doing things in a certain way. And um, yeah, so I hope that uh, I sometimes can, can open up a new, a new window for people to see. Well, life is made of choices, and after years on the West End, disappearing under the wig in a musical, singing the same song for a year and a half, I thought, either suicide or I do something else. <laughs> so, I decided to do something else. Audiences are all different and all, and all the same. They're very different, for example, in the rituals of clapping. At the end of a show, every country is completely different. Like in England, you have your set time for, for applause at the end of a show. So you, go, you, know, you come out once, applause, 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 get out, come out once again, applause, 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 and they can cheer more or less depending on how much they enjoyed the show, but you've got that set amount of time. In Italy, it can go on forever. <laughs> you know, you, you probably go home like after five hours, or, or maybe after two seconds. So in Italy, there is no such, such strict structure. In Germany, they clap with a, with a rhythm. So you have to kind of ta -ta -tum, ta -ta -tum, ta -ta -tum, follow that rhythm. In America, they just go berserk and crazy, whatever you do. Yeah, whoa, whoa, yeah, man, wah! They love it. 
Um, it just depends. In Spain, they give standing ovations. Well, maybe in my case, but they they tend to they're easy on the standing ovation, easier than other places. So they, there are differences, definitely. You in the streets. You in the streets. I I could not go on stage without makeup. I I just I don't think I've ever done it. I think even if I play. Mr. Uh, Mr. Anyone in the street. I would always have, have to have a base. I've never been on stage without makeup. I just couldn't. Uh, I don't even know why I do it. I've always done it. It's, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's an instinct. It's not even, um, there's no reasons behind it. It's, I just have to do it. I, I, I've always done it, I will always do it. And I love theatre with makeup when I see when I, you know, when I work with, I was working with these dancers, like, you know, dancers in the old days, they would do, you know, Margot Fontaine, the amazing eyes, huge eyes with a red dot and like the big lashes and because you can see it from far away, you can see the amazing eyes. And now you work with dancers and you kind of go, oh, are you not putting your makeup on? Oh, I'm ready. So, but <laughs> you've got nothing on, like really nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Également, les films Immortal Beloved, les polyèdres, les affiches des cirques, des buts de siècles. Thank you and good night. Bye -bye. <laughs> I want to go in a theater. Um, no, in a, in a meadow with flowers, yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, my favorite. I want to go to PG Tips Land. <laughs> um, take me to, to uh, an exotic waterfall. Oh, I want to go back, back to Italy. Take me to Italy. Take me to Mamma. Spaghetti, pizza, mandolino. We'll see. Mamma, solo per te la mia canzone vola. Ciao. <laughs> you might not use all of it, but there you go. <laughs>